London, it's Cowboy! Oh yeah, oh yeah baby, we're live, we're in London, or Barcelona, very nice. <laughs> no London. Very, very nice. Well some of us, uh, yeah, some of us have been away. Uh, we are live from London for the moment. Who's got that music? There you go. There you go. Fade it out like I'm like like I'm a professional. Like how about that? Turn. Uh, like a turn. It's like old radio days. Still to come. Ten <laughs> CC. Stay tuned for the news and the weather. Um, I'll be applying for a job with Steve right in the afternoon next. Uh, hello, friend. Hello, friend. Uh, shall I play the music to my to my uh, to do, my theme tune? Do, 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 do. Stop, Simon. We owe we owe uh, Steve right in the afternoon some money. Oh. We sung his theme tune and, and he'll be after it. Yes, uh, despite a war in the uh, East, uh, a failing economy and the ever-present threat of another COVID outbreak, the car show that used to be on the radio is back with a vengeance. Hello, friends. Hello, gonna... friend. It's friend, isn't it? It's not friend. <laughs> Hello, Singular. Friend. Hello, Hello friend. friend. It's a lovely picture of him I saw the other day getting out the back of his uh, Range Rover, Steve Wright. <laughs> and and the he's got back. This very... Well, he's got this very <laughs> small garage in central London that you can just about get the car in. And though, but not so, Steve Wright. But not Steve Wright. He can't get down the side, so he had to climb over yeah. the back seats and came out, and it looked like the Range Rover was giving birth. Uh, <laughs> coming up on the show this week, I've got a rant about the price of petrol Ooh. i think it's got worse than that now and uh question whether the leaders of the new world order are trying to drive us off the road and if you're listening in america uh we call it petrol and you call it i've got the wrong glasses on and you call it gasoline uh gasoline. with that in mind our classic car selection this week is one of the most fuel efficient cars you can buy it's small it's reliable it looks like it's from the future even though it's 20 years old I have no, come from your future. It's not a DeLorean. <laughs> Morty! Oh. <laughs> that wasn't very fuel efficient. Uh, we've also got a roundup of the week's events in the news. Uh, fresh from a trip to Spain and full of paella and vino tinto is our hombre from North London, uh, Senor Simon. <laughs> Hola, Simon. ¿Cómo estás? Uh, mon bien, gracias, which I'm told is the right way to say it and not bueno. Yeah, no, bueno is wrong. Muy bien. <laughs> Okay. That's I've just said your name is Don Esteban. Oh, which is okay. I just like to say when people t- that's about that's my Spanish runs out. I think I watched a movie once and somebody went, uh, hola, me llamo Don Esteban. Uh, yes, I've been up and down the highways uh, of this of the great land this week. Uh, I've been exploring my exciting roads around the world in our lost highway section of the show, which, funny enough, one of them is just outside Barcelona. Oh, that'll be an interesting. Mm. I had a look uh, at that. I've got a feeling it's a Nazi. It's where the Nazis ended up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at it going, didn't Hitler live there after the war? <laughs> just saying. Sure. Catholic Church hide him. <laughs> just saying. Just, I don't want to get deplatformed. Uh, let's remember that the only Nazis are the ones in Ukraine, according to the mainstream media. Mm. Carry on. Um, yes, but uh, we'll be going to another country where we can actually afford petrol in, which would be uh, the United States, is where we're going. Uh, but aside from that, it, oh, aside from that, uh, we'll have an amazing quiz for you. This week it's called Fuel for Thought. Ah, well done. I see what you fuel. did there. <laughs> As to stay tuned for all of that and more, I'm Simon Sujuan and come and play everything's a okay. Friendly neighbors, there, that's where you we meet. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street or Sesame's E's Treat? Apparently, in the nineties, which was E. Oh, really? Yes. In Espanol, it would be Sesame Estrella. Oh no, that's oh. Star. Rue, 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 no, Rue is French. French. Uh, plus, plus the sesame. <laughs> no, isn't it? Hang on, isn't it? Uh, El Camino. So it's sesame, El Camino, <laughs> El, or El Camino sesame. Uh, uh, Simon Suji won there, and of course, the show's very own Big Bird. And I'm Richard Green. And who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Putin? If you think we're on the run, we are the boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. Because who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Putin? If you think Ukraine is done. Obviously, this episode will be deleted if the Russians win and their uh, new masters running Europe. Just, just. Ah. Uh, this, of course, is. It is car boys and a uh, new sponsor. Yes, uh, for the show Four Star Petrol. 
Ooh, making a comeback. Than champagne. Yeah, from the. Mm, I smell the lead. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Very leady. <laughs> Uh, time now on the show for my rant. Uh, it's where I have a look at the wild world of motoring and comment on the idiocracy that we as drivers are often presented with. Unlike all the best dictatorships, there will be no room for dissent. This is going to be totalitarian. This week, I've been wondering about the increasing cost of fuel and what the heck is going on. We're being asked to pay increasing costs at the petrol pump. And now it's rumoured that prices are going up to two pounds a litre now if you're watching from the states that's more like ten dollars a gallon which is more than double what you're paying stateside which is about five dollars a gallon and you're complaining about that the cost of filling up a 55 litre family car with petrol has uh, exceeded 90 pounds for the first time wholesale oil prices are now falling according to the rac fuel watch the average price of a litre of petrol wrote to one rose to 163 0.71 on Monday, uh, another new record, said Simon Williams, the spokesman for the RAC Fuel Watch. I, I managed to get this photo the other day. So that's mm. that's the, I think that's the BP garage on a main road near me. Now, Diesel okay. also recorded another all-time high of 173.68, which is slightly higher than this one here. Um, mm. However, a barrel of Ben Brent crude, which is where oil, petrol, gas and diesel comes from, is back below the, what, sorry? Brent Cross, Cross. yes, Brent Cross. Uh, There's a nice Ikea there and a load of oil. Um, I wish there was. We wouldn't have this problem. Uh, Now, Brent crude, a barrel of oil is below the $100 mark. In theory, lower prices at the pumps should be seen in the not-too-distant future if retailers do the right thing and reduce their prices. But asking companies whose main motive is to make money to drop their prices is like asking a bear not to shit in the woods. Drivers are being warned. That pump prices uh, could in fact rise even further with experts warning the sudden crude oil price drop could be a lull before the storm, particularly in light of fragile negotiations or not between Russia and Ukraine. Speaking to Parliament's Treasury Committee this week, Dr Amrita Sen, Director of Research at Energy Aspects, warned petrol prices could rise to £2.40 a litre, maybe even £3 a litre. And that's when I'm getting the bicycle out. Look, folks, (laughs) we've been here before. Uh, in America, we we're here in the 1960s, in the early 60s, in the mid 70s, we had a fuel crisis um, that was linked to oligopolies like OPEC. Uh, there's always fuel shortages at certain times. Fuel prices have gone up and down like a hooker's knickers in a cat house. So nice. long term, it's a nice analogy, isn't it? I thought that's what I went to university. Um, uh, so in the <laughs> long term, we will see prices reduce. But in the short term, What I'd like to see is the government knock a few pence off the revenue they take from each litre of fuel, which I believe is more than one pound per litre. So you pay one pound 67 at the pumps and most of that costs go to HM Treasury. Uh, So you're taxed on your income, you're taxed on your car, you're taxed on the road to drive your car, you're taxed when you buy the car, you're taxed on fixing the car, you're taxed when you park the car. And who says we're not being completely shafted by the government. Any thoughts on this, Simon? Don't forget, we're being taxed twice on fuel. So not only are we paying uh, tax for fuel tax, but then we're having to pay VAT on top of that. Oh, yes, of course. So we're getting twice. We have to pay tax on petrol and diesel. Which, um, yeah, it's just great. It's just great. Just keep paying the tax. So when people say to me, well, we should be in like an economy like Denmark, where they pay 60% of their income in tax. I said, well, we already do that. We Mm -hmm. already do that. Our VAT is running at 20%. I think in the short term, a good thing for the government to do, because they they liked handing out people not having to go to work for over a year. They like dolling that out like it was Mm. sweeties. How about saying the people that want to go to work, like me, Less Rickster. Did you get, I think you got furloughed, didn't you? No, no, you, I've been working you, you, since. You worked all the way through it. I actually yeah, had to travel in for it. So people that want to go to work, want to get in their car, and go to work. So why mm. not do the honest thing? Don't, in April, the budget comes along. So please don't increase fuel excise duty. In mm. fact, drop it by 10 pence. Do it, say it's a six months remedy. And then in October, we're going to re it's going to go back up. But give yeah. people breathing space because people are going to stop going to work because somebody's going to sit down and work out it's cheaper for me to go on the social, to go on the dole, to claim off the government than actually get in my car. Why should I bother? Screw it. Mm-hmm. I'll put the car on, I'll put the car, I'll take the, the car off the road. Um, I'll register it as non driving. I'll, I'll stick the thing on uh, bricks and mm-hmm. I'll stay at home. 
<laughs> Should we have just some saying. more? Just saying. Should we have some more news? Yes, let's have some news. Let's have some news if I can find it. I think it says something. Here we go. Do, 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 do. First off, in Hippie Buzz is back as an EV news. Uh, German car maker Volkswagen has uh, finally unveiled its all electric ID or ID Buzz mm. vehicle, a modern take on an iconic VW camper van from the 1960s, which is set for release later this year. Uh, unveiled in Hamburg, the ID Buzz can seat five passengers along with the driver and has additional room for more than a thousand liters of luggage for retro holiday trips. Ooh. Uh, the eco friendly car. There it is. Mm. Uh, it's made with recycled synthetic materials, and the interior is completely free of any real leather, making it a totally animal free, uh, but still giving luxury lounge like feel. Mm. Uh, ID Buzz uh, first uh, shown off in concept form in the 2017 Detroit Motor Show, first deliveries of a car due in autumn in Europe. Prices are reportedly starting in the region of £40,000. £40,000! Try this microbus. Um, Volkswagen has also announced a second version of the model called ID Buzz Cargo, which features space for two Euro pallets, don't know what they are, uh, for more heavy duty loads, which isn't due into 2025 and will cost £50,000. So not only is petrol going up, but the prices of vehicles are going up. Uh, according to Volkswagen, ID Buzz has an iconic front with its V shaped front panel between uh, charismatic LED lights and two tone paintwork. Mm. Uh, Volkswagen's original camper van was. Uh, a mainstay of the Flower Power 60s hippie trail that also served generations of families on their holidays at home and abroad. Production of the original continued until 1979, which was a good year because I was born, uh, with the extended lifespan in Brazil until the end of 2013. So there you got it. it uh, the microbus. Well, I, it, does, I see, it doesn't look bad. Did we see one of these in the British car show down at um, Farnborough? Uh, I can't remember. I can't. I mean, I do. I've got a soft spot for the, for the VW. Um, yeah. You know the camper. Camper. And and the I actually really liked when they did the the low loader with the, the, the it was the four the four door. You don't see them very often. They did them in the sixties. There's like a utility van, and it had four, uh, the cabin was four door, and then a very small loader. I think they were used by telecommunications companies across the world. They look very cool. Okay. So it's, it's like a it's 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 effectively it's a pickup. But yeah. with a with a four cab at the front, um, that's too expensive. Forty thousand. That's a lot pounds. of money. Um, I would. <laughs> also, it's electric, and you got to do it two hundred fifty miles. They reckon, charging eighty percent in thirty minutes. The whole point about VW ba vans, VW bugs, wasn't it that you could work on it at home? It's like. It, well, I know I, my first car was a crappy Fiat, but a lot of my mm. mates, their first cars were 1970s uh, Super Beetles and mm, okay. they worked on them at home and then they lowered mm. them and you could do all this stuff. Really, yeah. you don't Modified. have to be a very good yeah. mechanic to work on a VW Beetle, which is good because yeah. they will break down all the time. But you're not going to work on this. This feels like it's people who want the. it's people that want the look but they you know talk the talk but they're not going to walk the walk uh, i'm not sure uh where's all the electricity coming from to power these we haven't mm. got enough electric uh, enough fuel in this country uh mm. to uh to run our car so i'm not sure about that it, I, although looks wise it's very sexy nice yeah i like that there we go but no no not for me i i just like oh i must tell you today so my son's sitting in the front of the car. We're going down the high street, my crappy wife's car with all the dents, the uh, Civic, and, <laughs> and, and, the, and, and I, let, I let, let a load of school children cross the um, zebra crossing, which was good. Usually I go through at about 90 miles an hour. Yeah. And around the corner, I heard this. Oh, it was a yeah. Ford, Ford, Van, yeah, Ford Ranchero, uh, oh. like the Ford version of the um, El Camino. Oh my God, yes. it looked, and it was in like a gold bronze low rider. And me and him gave the thumbs up to the guy and he waved and smiled. My son was like, <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> that's not going to do it over that. Uh, no. Meanwhile, <laughs> it's cheaper to fill up the wheelie bin than the car news. Petrol prices in the UK uh, uh, continue to soar. One brazen thief filled up his wheelie bin. I'll see if you can see this with fuel at a local petrol forecourt. Uh, footage shows a hooded man in a tracksuit. Uh, I think that might be Adidas with the three lines. Uh, yes. yes, he's been to Sports Direct. Uh, stroll up to the pumps <laughs> at the co-op in Washington, not Washington, America, Washington, Tainan. Tainan, we I've actually been there with a council mm -hmm. recycling trash can. He then dumps 143 pounds of unleaded fuel into the wheelie bin before casually walking oh. off in front of uh, shocked onlookers. It's believed the thief, uh, said to be working with an accomplice, returned later and repeated the crime. Uh, Tiny and Weir police are not investigating the incident. I hope he didn't smoke <laughs> when he was doing it. The man, however, did not hide the number 10 written on the uh, side of the bin, uh, mm -hmm. which could indicate, indicate the house number. Maybe it's Downing Street. Did he have mm -hmm. a shock of blonde hair under that hoodie? Who knows? Uh, the theft <laughs> comes. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. The theft comes as petrol bloody car, uh, as petrol and diesel prices have sh soared across the country amid sanctions on Russian energy following the country's invasion of Ukraine. Oil companies also pledged not to buy from Russia. Rod McKenzie, managing director of the trade body, the Rolled Haulage Association, and of course the former head of Radio One News that nobody ever liked. It was him. Yes. I'm sure it was him. Yes. yes. Everybody hated him. I... Apparently he was a complete see you next Tuesday. Uh, oh. Yes, very hot. No, not, not a nice man. Uh, described the spike <laughs> in the cost of diesel as dramatic. You're listening to Radio One. He <laughs> said, if hauliers have to pay more for fuel through my Radio One uh, newsbeat voice, they inevitably have to charge customers more. I suspect this will mean prices going up on everything that's delivered by a truck, which frankly 90%, 97% percent of everything that we get in britain is i don't think he's going to give me the job of hosting uh news breakfast show news no. yeah uh to be honest who can blame him fuel prices are going through the roof although can we stop blaming the war with ukraine as we import less than 10 percent of russian or fuel oil into the uk mm. in the us it's less than five percent and prices are still going up prices were going up before this prices mm. were, were going up a month ago so yep. it's been creeping up for reasons why nobody's explaining it could be because saudis have made no money in the last two years because none of us drove cars i'm just saying that mm, yeah i like this guy though <laughs> genius yes can you imagine he's trying. got home to the wife and bands oh <laughs> love put that bloody cigarette out <laughs> so get some chips you got some yeah. well, well. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, in uh, a mockery, Scotsman uh, tackles a pothole road. <laughs> <sighs> not me, Scotsman. He is a mockery. Scotsman. He uh, tackles a pothole Scotsman. road in Essex News. Uh, a councillor has issued a warning over people make, taking matters into their own hands after singer uh, Rod Stewart was filmed trying Sweet to repair. Baby Jane. The 77-year-old uh, singer posted a film of himself fixed in potholes in a road near his home and complaining about the state of it. Uh, he says, uh, people are bashing their, ca their cars up. Uh, the other day, uh, there was an ambulance with a burst tyre. My Ferrari could not go through here at all. Speaking oh, to the people there, uh, his Ferrari such, couldn't go down that road. Such a hard life. Uh, but now a council has urged people not to carry out repairs by themselves. Stuart's uh, post has had over 84,000 likes in a day and prompted comments praising his actions. Uh, he had been hailed by the locals who live in the area for repairing the potholes. The Motley Scotsman uh, said, uh, Pete, I'm not going to do his accent. He sounds a bit like Roger Taylor or Roger this is life from Essex, isn't he? I love Scotland. What? <laughs> People are bashing up their cars. He said the other day I couldn't get my. Uh, there's an ambulance. Blah 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 blah. blah I couldn't get through at all. Uh, we're all filling the potholes ourselves while millions and millions of pounds are being spent on the M11. Essex County Council uh, warned that anyone attempting to repair a road could be liable for uh, for accidents. They said uh, whilst we appreciate Sir Rod's uh, commitment to improving his community, uh, we would discourage anyone from doing work on the roads themselves because without proper traffic management and other specific safety measures, residents are putting them themselves at risk so there you go uh, in, in this high vis feeling battles on the road <laughs> all the time makes a difference from putting cocaine up my nose and what a nose he has rod stewart went on to say it was an easy fix but obviously when they dug up the tarmac the first cut was the deepest 
Hey, thank you. Um, <laughs> cut man with a common touch talking about his Ferrari. I yes. couldn't work out whether this was a private road or not. It wasn't a busy road. Uh, I think it's a bit sad. I don't care. Go away, Rod. And worryingly, he looks like my dad. Uh, my dad okay. looks a bit Rod Stewarty. Hasn't got the money. <laughs> That's why I'm presenting this. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I don't care, Rod. Um, I think somebody in that position would be slight. I mean, maybe it's a good thing that he's highlighting it because he's like a famous hand. Rod Stewart. Um, although he's one of those people like David Bowie that hasn't done a decent record for about 40. Actually, I'd say when he was 84. Class, no, no, earlier, much earlier. I, I don't think oh, okay. he's done a decent. I don't think he's made a decent record since 1976. So nearly 50 for me. I love I love the faces. Yeah. I love his first, I've got, well, I inherited off my father, the first sort of three solo albums, which was effectively all of the faces yeah. on his solo album. Uh, yeah. uh, Lang and the keyboard player out the faces, uh, Kenny Jones on drums. Um, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ron Woods plays guitar on it. So they sound really mm. good. And mm. then in the late seventies, he went disco and then he just went Mr. Pop. So I'm not really... Yeah, he's not released. He's not released a proper new album since I think he did an unplugged in like ninety. He did. He did a terrible song on on Graham Norton about six months ago, oh, and it was truly shit. And he can't sing anymore. But he can fill up the potholes in your road. And finally, in Asian, Mr. Bean plans to axe all cars from London News. London Mayor Sadiq Khan and Bell Fresh plans to expand the ultra low uh, emission zone. Uh, Ules to cover the entire city from next year, with the announcement coming less than five months after the £12.50 a day charging zone was last extended. Mr. Khan has asked London Transport, TFL, or Transport for London, I should say, to consult, uh, consult on extending the scheme's boundary from north and south circular roads to every road in the borough by the end of 2023. This would encapsulate much of the city's commuter belt. Well, it's almost up to the M25. Yeah. that The, the green bit, the dark green bit, and the, the bit in the middle, mm. that's current Ules, central London. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the real central London one where everybody has to pay, apart from electric mm. cars. The current Ules zone, which you've got to have a modern car, probably post-2006, yeah. is the dark green bit. And then the bit round the outside is where poor people like you and me can afford to live. Yeah. I'm right over by Heathrow. You're towards Chingford. Wait, in the Chingford, yeah. Chingford, yeah. round about there. So um, he said every Londoner... Um, including those living in outer London, should be able to breathe clean air. That's why I've announced a proposal to expand the ULEZ London-wide in 2023. Also, Sadiq Khan said every Londoner has the right to work and be able to put food on the plate for the families, especially those who can't afford a 50,000 electric car. But hey, who cares about that? So this is basically a tax on the poor again. The expansion of the existing ULEZ from next year would rule out um, previous proposals for a clean air charge and a greater London boundary charge that would hit the majority of drivers living in and entering the city. An analysis by uh, the Press Association found that more than three and a half million more people live within this uh, ULEZ zone uh, as it's prepared to expand. The Mayor's Office estimated that an additional 135,000 vehicles would be affected, meaning it would rake in almost 1.7 million extra per day but it won't it won't because those people will sell their car and as a guy that go his children go to the same school as my uh, son and daughter and he's a bus driver and he's now bought a bicycle because he said i can't afford the car so his wife has the car and he's just bought a bicycle and he cycles down from the bus station and picks uh, uh, uh the kids up and they go on the back of the bike um it's about making money, about the people that live here. Good luck with encouraging tourism. Bye-bye, um, London. I, I don't think I'll be here much longer. Um, the interesting thing for me, excuse me, <coughs> is where I live, up there, that way, round about 700 yards is out of London. Seven, 800 yes. yards. Yeah. So my father has an old Honda. So mm. is there going to be a camera on this road, I'm wondering? And if he can't, he'll be all right until he gets to the top of the road. And, so then, charged, I, yeah. and then he's going to be charged for when he stays here. He doesn't drive the car when he's here. He gets on mm. the bus and he goes to the local curry house and he yeah. 
he goes to a couple of he doesn't even go into central london he literally hangs out in the house with his girlfriend and doesn't really do a lot maybe goes down to kingston in the river maybe goes to richmond for some food that that's it and he goes on the bus he doesn't want to drive so i was joking that he's going to get to that camera up there 700 yards down the road put gaffer tape on the front and the back of the plates drive down the road park up leave it there and then when he leaves Da, da, da. And when he gets to the camera again, take the gaffer tape off and continue his journey. I think 700 <laughs> yards. He should, well, it doesn't make any sense. Mm, it's ridiculous. Just making money. That's all it's doing. And there if we everyone, go. If they want everyone to drive electric vehicles, then it's kind of a bit pointless. I can't afford, I'm pretty not on bad income and I cannot afford a £50,000 car, nor yeah. do I want to buy a £50,000 car that will depreciate um, mm. As fast as a hooker's knickers come down in a cat house. That's the <laughs> second time I've used that. It's time yes. for the classic car selection. Yay! Oh dear. The pianist sounds like he's been on the. Uh... I think we've got Les Dawson in. Les! This is terrible! I don't know. <laughs> Well done, Les. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, I think they've been on the old. Uh, they've been drinking. They've been drinking. Uh, the sponsor of this show, Four Star. Ooh, four Star. It's more expensive than champagne. Mm. Mm, taste of lead. Time now uh, for the classic car selection. This is where we take a, a, a look uh, and a look at a much overlooked classic and give it a polish to prove it's a diamond in the rough waiting to be discovered. This week, with petrol prices on the up, we're looking at a fuel efficient hybrid car that's a bit of a design classic. Uh, and it's not the Prius. It's not a Lexus. This was one of the first hybrids to ever make it to these shores. And it's a bit and it's not a milk float. Uh, and it's a bit <laughs> of a rare bird and stylistically a good one. The this week's classic car selection is the Mark One Honda Insight. That's the boy. Uh, nearly there. That's like a woodlouse. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is. That's it from the front with a lady with 90s sort of big hair in it. Ooh, uh, the Honda Insights based on the Honda JVX hybrid sports car concept vehicle. That's the one. Look at it. It's weird at the back. I love it. Uh, which was debuted at the 1987 to, uh, Tokyo Motor Show. The car took a while to get off the drawing board on the road. However, the first of the Japanese car makers hybrid sports cars went on sale in Japan in 99. The car made it to the UK in 2000. Power comes from 1000cc VTEC engine, which produces Ooh. wait for it. 67 horsepower. Despite the nice. low power output, the car's nippy, fun to drive, although the most exciting thing about the technology is, is the technology on show. It's a lightweight integrated motor assist hybrid, adds another 13 horsepower to the power output, but what's really clever, it acts as a generator during deceleration and braking, recharging the Insight's batteries in the very same way the um, Prius does. But this was the first time it was done by Honda. Uh, it's this plus the Insight's low design drag and the use of weight-saving plastics that help the re car return an average, average Ooh, 64 that. mpg. That being said, many people report over 90 mpg. It's also Honda, so it's ultra-reliable. The batteries for the hybrid are only a few hundred pounds to replace. Ooh, Remember that. Good. New batteries, 300 pounds to replace. On the bad side, only two seats plus a luggage shelf and luggage cubby hole at the rear. It does have high insurance premiums due to high cost of repairs. Also, weirdly, any car registered before 2000, March 2001 did not qualify for the CO2 uh, rebate based on the vehicle excise duty. I don't know. Anyway, uh, how much should I pay? Well, a Mark 1 from 99 to 2003 should cost you around five to seven thousand pounds because they're so rare. So rare. Um, and it, but it will be in superb condition. In fact, earlier generations of ones, these are more expensive than Mark Ones than the Mark Twos and the Mark Threes because of their design and rarity. Mm. This example, grey import from Japan, forty-one thousand on the clock, full service history, just under seven thousand uh, pounds. So why not go green and save pounds with the Honda Insight Mark One? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I really like that. It is. A, I like that. And then there's the front. How do you get the back wheel off if you have a flat? Oh, is there a? Oh, there's a panel. Oh, that's cute. There's a little cute panel. And it really is weird. It's like it, it's a proper little hybrid. And I know in America, mm. I've watched a couple of videos where the people have got over 100 mpg out of them. Really? Yeah. 
you can do it. They're really weird. They came back with the inside and made it into a four-door car because I've seen a lot of inside taxis doing the rounds, yes. but it's not as yeah. good as this. This mm. this is very, it's, I'd say that's that's quite a sort of um, hipster car. Mm. I yeah, think you drove do. around in that. It's got a little what, a thousand cc engine. I mean, my first car was was nine hundred and no, hang on, nine fifty. Nine fifty, I think that the fee it was yeah. followed by a a one point one Citroen RE. <laughs> you know what RE for? What? Relatively extravagant. Um, <laughs> both the shit. But yeah, so there we go. Um, it's time for Lost Highways, and I have Ooh, not queued up the music. So let's see what's going to happen. Oh, it's better than that Les Dawson crap uh, we were playing earlier on. Here we go. Les Dawson, Les Dennis. Will your mouth looks kind of pretty? You must be related to me. No, sister, let's get married. That's enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage cool. the American viewers to this. Yeah, podcast. it's not working. <laughs> come, come, Rust Belt. Biden may have given you up. <laughs> if, if you're living in the Appalachian Mountains, but good old England hasn't. Come back and join the empire. It's not working. Uh, it is, of course, the Lost Highways uh, section of the show where regulars do the show know that it's our feature where viewers email us in and give us their favourite uh, roads and the reasons why they love them. It can be quite coastal road that leads down to the sea. Alternatively, it can be a straight two-lane black top that leads to infinity. And then right should come the pedal to the metal. Uh, whatever your poison is, let us know your perfect driver is here on Carways. What is, how can people get in touch with oh, us? Oh, with car doll. Stand by. They can get in touch by emailing the show at car hyphen boys and outlook.com facebook car hyphen boys at car boys with four sets twittering car hyphen boys at car underscore boys also with a z instagram at car underscore boys with the tree zeds and into the car boys uh, inbox this week is manuel from valencia he says hola car boys uh, i see simon you went to my hometown of barcelona no, no, hang on, uh, <laughs> but did you drive there? Well, I didn't drive. I went by. No, I think he means did I drive round there? Not ah. did I drive there. No, it's a long uh, way to drive. Yes, uh, he says in Catalonia the roads around Montserrat are fabulous. Not Montserrat, the island of Montserrat. Uh, Montserrat is in the Catalan mountain range. Yes, uh, it's the Catalan... <laughs> That's no, where, a big bird uh, that sung that song with uh, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Uh, it's home to the numerous historical sites and natural wonders where you can explore. The sheer peaks can be seen uh, from miles away, and it's easy to find your way here. Uh, if you're planning to unscale these mountains, the highest peak is uh, Saint or Sant uh, Gironi, uh, which towers 1,236 1, meters above sea level. You find hiking trails that can take you to the top, along with other trails for additional adventure. Uh, you'll find Montserrat Barcelona. about an hour <laughs> northwest of Barcelona. Uh, the B112 uh, is not too dangerous and it's well maintained and not too uh, not too narrow a mountain road uh, which of course has lots of curves we do like curves on this show we do um, listen In I've got way. a feeling I've seen this on a Discovery Channel documentary about really? did Hitler escape from world, <laughs> from Germany after the war and I think he hid here I think this is a monastery that or something, castle. isn't it <laughs> yes yeah, it is yeah the Catholic Church I'm sure hid him here uh, it was the rat lines as they all tried to flee to Argentina um that being said, mm -hmm. Spanish roads, I was in Spain 20 years ago, and Spanish yes. roads are amazing. The main yeah. highways, I didn't drive because I was broke, so I just caught the bus everywhere. These massive uh, bus buses, from, I went to Madrid, down to yeah. um, Cordoba, uh, to Granada, down to Nurja on the south coast. And I travelled all around, Andalusia, and it was really cool, and Castilla, but um, Castile, uh, uh, the roads are good, and the reason why we paid for them, the yes, European, European Union money paid for them every 200 yards. There's a big sign saying paid for by the EU, so yeah, Ooh. why not? Why not enjoy those roads? And maybe <laughs> you'll pick up a swastika or an iron cross you'll find in this monastery. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Um, well, where are we going next? Finally, on the highways this week, Major Tom says, Hi, Cowboys, really enjoyed your show. Uh, what's the weather? Uh, so, <laughs> to ground control. Uh, so, since the show is uh, 101, I wanted to share you, of course, this is show 101. Yes. Like yeah. room 101. 
George Orwell, 1984, mm-hmm. which is, feels like we're currently living in at the moment. Uh, sorry, uh, Major Tom says, uh, since this show is 101, I wanted to share you with my fascination with the Highway 101 here in the States. He Ooh. writes, uh, US Route 101, there we go, sorry, stretching from, uh, it's one of the most historic highways in America, stretching from LA, California, north to the heart of Olympia, Washington. You're sure to see some most beautiful sights along the Pacific Coast Highway. It's not the, it's Pacific on the, Coast Highway. Okay. On Pacific Coast Highway. With more than 1,500 miles to explore, there's something for everyone on this West Coast adventure. Through the northern San Francisco, the 101 remains rooted on congestion city streets due to freeway revolts, uh, leaving the city on the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. It then departs Ooh. the immediate coast and continues through the wine country and redwood forests until it reemerges coastside at Eureka. 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 And everybody else shouted back, you streaker. The route <laughs> provides access through the extraordinary rugged and scenic uh, terrain of the North Coast and the vast groves of protected redwoods in Ooh. the uh, area parks, including the Redwood National and State Parks, before reaching the Oregon border. Isn't that there's, there's a photo of the Model T Ford driving through one of the redwoods? They've cut ah. a whole thread. This looks like Laurel and Hardy driving through. This obviously. I mean, I think you're up. This uh, this is a guess. This is probably near Big Sur, just oh, okay. north yeah. of Malibu. Uh, it's one of the, the uh, PCH, Pacific Coast Highway, is one of the greatest yeah. driving roads in the world. The world. <laughs> it takes you all the way almost to, to Canada. I, I'm, I can't recommend this uh, more. My brother-in-law did it two years ago, and it was like one of the oh, dreams. Okay. Hired a Mustang and took his Ooh. wife and the kids uh, along PCH, which is very, very cool. I'm very jealous. Of course, all you can fit in the back of a of a Mustang is kids, because it's yes, that. it is. <laughs> Although, um, and if you've ever seen the movie Play Misty for me, that's based along there. I think that's based. It's Clint Eastwood movie, 1971, yeah. and the opening scene. He's listening to jazz driving up to the Newport, I think it's the Newport or Jazz Festival. I think it's New, Newport. Is that there? Anyway, driving, uh, oh. uh, yes. driving to Wales. Tom was there. <laughs> Lovely. In you come. Windsor Davis said, oh dear, how sad. Never mind. Um, no, Clint Eastwood is driving in the opening scene in a, um, um, is it the XK150? The sort of post war jag. jag. Yeah. And it's yeah. and it's two door, and you know back then you could have probably got one of those things for like five thousand dollars. They're yeah. now worth about two hundred thousand. He's driving along, listening to mm, nice jazz. <laughs> uh, if you want to get your driving road onto the show, there are all the details. I'm not going to read them out because I'm exhausted. Uh, time now on the show to delve into, into the, the bulging sack that is locally known as the mailbag, and this week. It's overflowing. That's a bollocks. Just noticed you changed your glasses. <laughs> I, I, I haven't done it. Re- I just can't find the other ones. I think the kids have, have hidden them somewhere. I'm having a right nightmare at the moment. They've nicked, they've <laughs> hidden. The, I've got a catapult. Right, that I bought in Greece many years ago. Yeah, and it's and it's it's made out of olive wood and and leather. And it the reason I have it is because the but the bloody council have got these massive oak trees outside my house. So every bird, and by yes. that I mean every um, winged a, one, the avian feathered. species, yeah. not the Richard type. Um, they all they all sit in this oak tree and they crap on my car. But what I've discovered, I've got a variegated bush with red berries outside, is I get my catapult and I fill it up with these red berries and I fire it at the pigeon's arse. And um, I don't get birds. My next time I was like, why don't you cut the birds shit on your car? I went, because I have Pavlovian responded to them and fired <laughs> these red berries at their backside so they don't park their bums on my car. Yeah. Can't find the catapult. Can't find the glasses. Oh, Ergo, I'm wearing my, um, I don't know what you call these. Other um, ones. My other ones. <laughs> Yes, I found a bit more. <laughs> These are the ones where I want, I want, I'm trying to look clever. I don't think it's working. Uh, <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Alan in Matlock, Derbyshire, Alan. says, hello, cowboys. Hello. 
Alex ah. Reeve. Uh, I've got a question about fuel. Ooh. Uh, it's a very fuel-themed uh, show today, in particular diesel fuel. I've heard you can run a diesel car on cooking oil. Ooh. In light of massive increase in prices at the pumps, should I start buying huge quantities of crisp and fry yeah. uh, to run my old Skoda Octavia? Ooh, crisp and dry. It's crisp and dry. Mm. Um, this is a weird one. Okay. Because... <laughs> Mainstream media would like you to think, all right, I'll explain. The answer to this to his question is yes and no. Rudolf Diesel, who invented the diesel engine, has a little bit of history, intended the engine to run off vegetable oil. That was a very long time ago. You can go to the supermarket around 60p, pick up uh, vegetable oil, which is far cheaper than the 190 or whatever it's going to be for a litre of diesel. You get that for 60p instead. Um, and you can run your car off this. The problem with putting Mazola into your car is twofold. Firstly, modern engines, modern diesel engines, are more sensitive than the new ones from decades ago. The old ones were working on sort of compression, um, mm. and they could literally run off any, anything. Um, today, modern diesels need finer fuel than thick vegetable oil, and somewhere down the line, you're going to you're going to get misfires. And it's going to play mm. havoc with the computer system in the car if you've got a diesel that's like 30 years or newer. Modern, mm. modern engine, in the end, it's going to cause you problems. The other issue is, of course, the reason this is 60p and not £2 is because there's no tax on this. You're going to have to pay tax at some point. And this is the grey area. <laughs> you've got to prove that you're not paid the fuel duty if you get stopped by the police, but that you intend to pay it. So if you keep the receipts for all the vegetable oil, if you show them then, say, well, no, I'm going to pay this at the end of the year, they, they can't stop you. But the other issue is there isn't a frying squad. There isn't oh, a police. <laughs> yeah, I, see. I was thinking the police out there aren't stopping cars that smell of chip fat when they run past because it's an excise duty thing, not a policing thing. So in theory, excuse me, in theory, you could, but in practice, I wouldn't because it's a lot of hassle. Yep. yep. Um, so you, you could, I mean, yeah. if it's, if it really gets bad, you can do it, but everybody else is going to be doing it, which will pull up the price of Christmas. Right. Oh, my nail. You can see I've been painting well, the lounge what you, today. What you could do, especially if you're in time and wear, is get a, a, a dustbin and fit up from your local fish and chip shop. You could go and knock on the door and say, "Are we? Have you got any cold or hot uh, uh, chip oil? That you, you know, you, but you're not going to have to then filter it. You can't put that straight in with bits of batter. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's a bit of batter going through the edge. <laughs> it's a little bit of fish in there. Oh, I think that was a fish cake that went through there. How we? How we? My northeast accent. I don't know why. It's just generic. Uh, okay. Yes. So. It's really grey, this area. It's, if mm. you run your car, if you live in the countryside and you run your car of red diesel, you'll get in trouble. Vegetable oil, as long as you're keeping those receipts and showing I intend to pay tax on this, mm. uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because I think that the damage you're going to do to the car yeah. is, unless you've got a real piece of rubbish that you don't care about, don't do it. Uh, meanwhile, Denise in Chesterville says, hire car buys. Uh, I don't know whether she sounds like that. She just says, hiya. Uh, you know, you two think you know all about cars, but I'm here to prove that we, the viewers, also have the knowledge. She said she's never changed a, he a headlight bulb on her car before. Uh, she was a bit scared to do it, but she gave it a go. And uh, what do you know? She managed to fit a new light bulb to I don't think that's her. If it is, I'm quite scared of a look at the size of the hand. Uh, she managed to fit a new light bulb to a very old Honda Civic. The bulb cost her five pounds as part of the bulb replacement kit. Took her 30 minutes as it was tough to get the old one out. She reckons she saved at least 20 pounds. She probably has. Okay. Uh, now, I've got some Hondas. They are easy Hondas. You push and then you go lefty loosey and it comes out righty tighty righty tighty so lefty lucy it pulls out there's a plug on the back and i've changed all the bulbs in both my cars not a problem my old escort used to have to take almost the bumper off um my old citroen wasn't bad simon how say you um not done it on the mini so far okay in the fiesta you had to take the light housing out oh to change it. really 
on the car you had to take the bumper off and then the, the light housing out um but certain cars i know having got the sport car light replace are on a blacklist of certain places that they say they will replace your light and they look so at like that. how frauds they go no and they won't do it <laughs> i think i think i've got a feeling my old uh, escort would i seem to remember doing it and just giving up mm. it was a sealed unit Mm. You couldn't get your hand to the back of it. It was like almost to make it hard. And I think I just used to wait until the service came around and let the garage deal with it. Because yeah. you needed special tools and stuff. And at the time I was like, no, I can't do this. I don't know. Um, well done. Well, it's always worth giving these things a go. And if you fail, mm. just give up. And, but yeah, um, yeah, I remember <laughs> my mate had a Land Rover and it's literally four screws. It was four <laughs> Phillips screws. The thing came off. Yeah. You took the bulb out. You put the bulb in put the plate back on and it was four screws i went that's genius all cars should be like this Susie q calls us or emails us from normandy france she says uh hello garçon voiture hello comment ça va vous allez bien ça va bien ça va bien Bien, merci. Bien, if we're really informal. She's uh, got a decision to make. She wants advice from the car boys. She says uh, she's getting a new car. Her old Renault gave up the ghost last week. Should she get a a lease car? She's seen a deal for 200 euros a month on a new Renault. I would say it's a fucking Renault, but that, anyway. Or now this is this is a good one. Should she buy a second-hand car uh, from um, a neighbour? No, it's the neighbour. This one. Uh, her local baker in the village is selling his white van for two thousand euros. It's a two thousand and thirteen Renault Kangoo diesel, thirty-seven thousand on the clock. No dents, no scrapes. She has no kids, but owns three dogs, which she could throw in the back and thinks it'd be perfect. But what's our opinion? What do you think about lease cars? Uh, they're never yours, are they? And you've always got to drive them with kid gloves and so nothing scratches it and not they'd take that off the price and all that stuff. So there's nothing like actually owning your car. You see all these kids driving around, certainly in London, in high-powered BMWs and whatever it may be, but they don't own their car. I own my car. <laughs> um, the lease thing, it comes with no headaches. Um, mm. free I mean, I've had this argument all the time with people and people really annoy me. Oh, to get a lease car, it's the easiest thing to do. Like, people clever people with um qualifications who have you know people in their 50s have i oh, just get a lease car it's the easiest thing it's the easiest thing i said well it's not I mean, immediately it is you've got no headaches you get a new car usually free insurance uh sometimes free tax uh no need to do the mot uh they don't break down because they're brand new uh they don't pay any huge costs up front maybe a few thousand pounds and then but so you pay a few thousand pounds then it's 200 euros a month which mm. over a year is 2,400 yeah. in a year, which is less than the cost of this van. So you can buy the van, run it for a year, and you still have 400 euros in the back of yeah. your pocket, the only downside being it's a Renault. But <laughs> I would just do that because you're going to save cash. Mm. It's a no-brainer. and It's not 1952. Cars can do, if they're looked after easily, most brands can do 150,000 miles. Yeah. Without Easily. any headaches, the older the car, the more. So we've got two. We've got a modern Honda and an and, a, and an old Honda. The modern Honda cost me nothing, but depreciates by a thousand pounds a year. The old Honda doesn't depreciate, still worth fifteen hundred quid. But every time I take it in, I get oh yeah, three hundred fifty. It's four hundred quid. It's three hundred fifty. It's four hundred quid. I have to pay that out, but that's once a year. Not. Mm. I I don't understand why people don't buy secondhand cars. And why they want the latest thing. I don't I don't care yeah. for the latest thing personally. I've got a friend I of mine that. who always has to have a new lease car. And I go, but you're wasting so much money. But you know, yeah. it's it's trendy. Uh, it's like, you know, and that's why I wear a Casio. <laughs> new cars don't appeal to me. They're all a bit bland. I, I will go with you there. Plus, as my dad always used to say, because he's an old curmudgeon, oh new technology, that's something else that can break. And he's right. <laughs> he's right. Uh, finally, we have Jake the Snake in Florida. Oh, again. Jake the Snake. We haven't yeah, heard of him yeah, yeah. for a while. He was here uh, in the early days when we were doing he was. He's, radio. He's back, he's back again. I think he's been drinking. Uh, he emailed and he says, why do you Europeans drive small cars? What's your issue? <laughs> Over here in the States, don't know whether he sounds like this. 
I don't know what Floridian accent sounds like. We got great big old monsters of cars. But why the heck are you cheese-eating surrender monkeys driving baby strollers? <laughs> Jake drives. Wait for it. I love this. He's now got, I don't know what he had before, but he's now onto a Ford F-150 Raptor, which is a big okay. old boy. And he drives one of these. A 1971 <laughs> Chrysler Newport. Um nice. That's a V8 that'll do, I imagine, in excess of four miles to the gallon if you floor it. What a lovely car. And it's got leaf springs on the rear. Look yes, at that. look at that. Da, 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 da. And you could get uh, the bodies of four mafia hoods into that boot. As, um, didn't, which I think, didn't Jake the State drive down the was it road of death or something like that when he oh, mailed us in? I think he probably did. From yeah. Newark to Florida during the pandemic to escape. <laughs> To, to sunny Florida. Yeah, you could get easily, um, uh, you could get the cast members of uh, uh, Goodfellows stabbing somebody in, in, mm. in, in the Robert De Niro, stabbing somebody in, the, in at least three people in the back of that boot, I think. Um, here's your answer, Jake. Uh, the answer to this actually is myriad. Uh, and yeah. as I'm dressing Jake, who's an American, uh, that means many. Uh, firstly, our roads are super tiny. You go to Cornwall in the west of England, roads will not fit modern cars. I've had the sides of hedges touching my little yeah. Honda going down there. Not a 1971 <laughs> monster land yacht like this one. Even in central London, there are roads that you can just about fit a Honda Accord down. Secondly, as we've mentioned earlier in the show, fuel is twice as expensive uh, here than in the US. So nine miles to the gallon won't cut it. And finally, uh, all Europeans have giant penises, so we don't need to compensate with a large car. That being mm. said, Jake the Snake, he might not need to compensate with a name like Jake the Snake. Uh, I love this Chrysler Newport. It and I it. would give... I would happily lose a couple of inches to uh, <laughs> actually that's I happily lose a couple of millimeters to uh, get to own one of these. It looks amazing. But it's for it American does. roads. It's not for British roads. No, nope. sorry, it doesn't go around corners very well. You. I, I do. I, when I went to America, I had to explain this to Americans, and they, I, I'd say every single city in America is based on a grid system, or most yeah. cities, right? Every single city in England is based on where guys used to walk their sheep. So you get these little <laughs> lanes in London, don't you, that do this. Yeah. They're called yeah. Old Patch Alley, and it does like this, right? Because that's the way the guy used to walk his sheep. And then they built houses, and then the houses became building, big buildings. And then the road got tarmacked in probably the 1920s, and the mm. road went round like that. There you go. Yep. Yeah, I drive a mini, well, mobile shoe room, really, because I live in London. And you have a huge, um, they, oh, if you, <laughs> yes, if you want to uh, email us uh, here at the Cowboys, you, that's all the, I'll do it again, and get your letters uh, onto the letters page, letter bollocks, uh, Phil Simon, while, while I find the music for... Uh, ah, it's filling time, yeah, so those are all the details, if you need to, just rewind the show and see yeah. where all the details are. There you go. Yeah, it's not like radio <laughs> yeah. in the old days. We have yes. to repeat it three times. <laughs> like that. Nice. <laughs> I did like that. Very yeah. 80s. Very Hang 80s. On. <laughs> Steve Jones with the Pyramid Game. As <laughs> it is competition time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is competition time. And with fuel prices rocking up this week, we thought we'd have a look at the liquid gold of oil, uh, specifically yes. petrol and diesel. Uh, so this week, it's all about fuel. And uh, this week's contestant is Richard from Southwest London. Confident, Rich, you're going to know about... No, Yes. Oil and petrol. Yes. Yeah. Petrol and as they say in the in the um, Christmas uh, carol, get, I like to gather winter fuel. Uh, very good. King Wenceslas last last last. <laughs> uh, this I week, like I've been uh, drinking today. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. I think my wife's turned the heating up. Been a tough 
tough week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, this week you are playing for a gallon of petrol. There we go. It's in comes in a green container. Wow, like cool. It has a street value here in London of about four thousand pounds. There you go. Nice. I will send you a little <laughs> gift that somebody sent me about petrol thing. It's very rude. Can't show it on the show. Get spat. Oh, oh. Uh, it's a yeah, BJ I've got one. Too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A lot of them going on. So uh, eyes down looking. Question yes. number one for the uh, gallon of, of, of petrol. Yes. Uh, what well, is I the name? These glasses maybe look slightly like Timmy Mallet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to whack, whack, oops any moment now. That, that was DLT. <laughs> no, whack, whack, oops. Was that, was that DLT? Who had the yeah. hammer? The rubber hammer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timmy Mallet had the hammer, but Didn't whack, 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 oops was... was whack, whack, oops DLT? Wow. Yeah. I've yeah, been U-tree. I can hear you tree at the door now. No. Uh, question number one. Uh, what is the name given to a type of vehicle that uses two or more distinct power sources to propel the vehicle? Is it A, hybrid, or B, lowbrid? Oh, is come it on, it's hybrid. hybrid. Yes, it is. One out of one. Uh, so, yes, it will be petrol or electric and combine the two. Yes, there you go. Uh, one out of one. Uh, question number two. Which uh, petrol stroke oil retail brand's logo logo features a white star in a red circle? That's a, a white star in a red circle. Is it A, Esso, or B, Texaco? Texaco. My ex-girlfriend used to work at a Texaco garage. Uh, the, the, uh, the star actually is a reference to Texas, hence why it's called Texaco. Texaco. And Q8. I, it it yes. took me years to work out Clever. Q8. A Q and then Q8. number eight actually refers to the country Q8. Oh, yes. Genius. There you go. <laughs> a two out of two. Well done. Well, uh, question, like number, question number three. Petronas yes. is the uh, yes. oil and gas company. Malaysia. Owned by the government of which country? It Malaysia. Is a, it is, yeah. A, Vietnam would be Malaysia. It is Malaysia. Well, you asked the wrong Malaysia. person. I've been, I've been there too many times. I've been up the Petronas Towers. Those towers. I've even had a go at the filling up a formula one car there's in, there's a mock-up oh, yeah. was in the patronus towers Mercedes. when yeah it showed you how quickly you could do fill it up yeah and then do it and they were keeping it so that was quite good fun yeah as opposed to 30 minutes to recharge an electric vehicle as yeah. uh, so, <laughs> three out of three uh, question number four what term uh what term was given is given uh, for the measurement of the quality of petrol is it a the therm rating or b the octane rating a it therm is. rating it is the octane rating. Of course, because of course, therm is a unit of gas, I think. Is it? Okay, I there you so. go. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. It was the octane rating. Well done. So, uh, Uma Thurman is, is, is uh, Uma, Uma. A quantity uh, of gas. No. <laughs> I wouldn't care. Uh, question Have you ever five. heard anybody else called Uma? No. Then people no. make up these bloody names, don't they? Uma. If Uma, you said Uma's Uma. coming round, I go, who? Uma? 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 Uma. <laughs> <laughs> just call a Tracy. Get over with it. Get over yourself. Seriously. Uh, question, question number five. We mentioned this earlier on in the show. Yes. Who first painted in the, the patented the design for the diesel engine back in 1892? Is it A, Rudolf Diesel or B, Carl Benz? A, it's Rudolph it's Rudolph. Rudolph the Red Nose Diesel. Yes. Diesel man, it is yes. five out of five. Well done. Yeah, uh, cool. Roll, man. That, what that am I winning, by the can. way? Oh yeah, the uh, petrol. The petrol. The petrol. <gasps> wow. For street I will in have London of many, many ladies pounds. wanting to do various things with me because I own a Ooh. can of petrol. <laughs> uh, question number six: Saudi Arabia, Russia, and can we say Russia? Yeah, Saudi yeah. Arabia, Russia, and the United States are the world's largest producers of crude oil. Uh, that's the top three. Which yep. country is the fourth largest producer? Is it A, Norway, or B, Iran? A Norway, B. Ooh, Iran. I've sod it. I think the Norway have had their day. I'm going to say Iran. It is Iran. Well done. Yes. Six out of six. Uh, the, why do you uh, think petrol... we're being nice to Iran at the moment? I'm just uh, saying. Why, why do you think we're being uh, nice to Saudi Arabia as well? Uh, so the petrol can is well on the way for Exactly. You. Yes, I noticed uh, in the news we were kissing the bottom. Yes. The, the prince that likes to have people liquidized in Turkish embassies. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> Yes. Uh, question number seven uh, for uh, currently at 100%. Uh, question number seven, the top four countries that uh, currently consume the most petrol are the yes. United States, yes. China, yes. Japan, and Russia. Which is the fifth biggest consumer? Is it A, Germany, or B, Canada? Ooh, a, Germany, hard. or B, Canada? Hard. Now, you see, most people oh. think Canada's quite green. Canada's a, quite a polluting um, 
quite a polluting country. I'm going to say Germany. I think there's more people in Germany. It is. Well done. Ah. It is Germany. Yes. Uh, yeah. of, uh, so well done. Seven out of seven. Hundred percent so far. Uh, what is the name? What is the name of the tanker that suffered a severe oil spill in Alaska in 1989? Was it A. The Exxon Valdez? Valdez. B, Exxon Valdez. Bo Boaty McBoatface. Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> I wish it was Boaty McBoatface. No, it was, it was yeah. uh, the Exxon Valdez because I do remember uh, my mate's dad had dyed hair and somebody said, his hair dye looks so bad, <laughs> he's got the Exxon Valdez on his head. Hey, uh, eight out of eight. Well done. Yes. Uh, let's let's uh, hopefully get a, get a bit harder with this question. The Anglo-Persian Oil Company, yes. APOC, yes. the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, is better yes. known by which name? Is it A... BP or B shell? I think it's, B, it's BP. Very good. It is BP. Uh, which that, I know the reason that they carved up Iran and uh, Iraq is not based, this is why there's so many problems, it's not based on tribes, it's based on who got to have their share of the oil. Yep. And that's why you may see on your receipt uh, APOC when you go to ah. BP petrol station. That is one. Uh, so for the full house, full house, return yes. out of 10, and that's a can of petrol oh, worth 4,000 pounds here in London. I've got uh, half a can of, of that with additive in for my petrol lawnmower in the garage. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to be sell very for rich 2, I know. Um, question number here. 10. <laughs> uh, which company marketed the first diesel car? Was it A, Peugeot, or B, Mercedes Benz? A, Peugeot, B, Mercedes Benz. <sighs> Okay. For the full house, for the now, win. would say Mercedes Benz, I would think, would be the company. But the French, see, this is the trouble. The French do love a diesel. They love to they be sat at the traffic lights, thinking, "Is there a bus behind me? Oh no, it's my car." Yeah. Um, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Mercedes. For gut reaction was Mercedes. Full house, ten Yay! out of ten. Well done. Street value of four thousand pounds. Crazy. Yeah, that so petrol is yours to petrol. do what you like. Yeah, drink it. <laughs> Put it in my car and not go anywhere. Watch it evaporate. Put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, cool. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's been a good show. Uh, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, watching it. Uh, if you haven't, don't really care because it's free, isn't it? Not like you're paying me anything. Uh, we really ought to set up a Patreon or something, but I don't think we're going to get much money out of it. What do you reckon? No, not not for the map. I just want to go around with a tin. Come on, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the show. Give us your five piece, your ten piece. Um, yeah, that's about it from us. Uh, you can get in touch with the Carboys at the usual address. I will be off this week enjoying my, my petrol. I might mm. drive an unwanted journey. <gasps> and that's the other thing. When people say, don't go drive uh, unnecessary journeys. When was the last time you did an unnecessary journey? <laughs> I don't, what unnecessary journey? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will even walk to the local shop and think, well, I'll, always, I'll just walk to the shop. I'll walk to the shop. I'm not going to an yes. unnecessary journey. Do you ever go out for a nice Sunday drive? I've never done that. No. I just get, let's go out for a nice Sunday. Where, what? In my Honda. Why would I go for a nice Sunday drive? It's like, I, I'm doing something because I have no choice. That's it from the show. See you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Ta-ta.